Hi everyone, welcome back to the Astro Backyard. Tonight we're going after a deep sky beauty that doesn't get talked about enough. The stunning M100 galaxy, or the blow dryer galaxy as it's called. This might be the last galaxy season project I squeeze in before the nebulae return. As usual, the forecast could go either way, but I'm committed to taking this image tonight. I'll show you the exact gear and settings I'm using and share my image processing routine for those that want to see the full process. These midges are are getting out of hand. I'm going with a large refractor telescope tonight, the William Optics FLT-132, the Fluorostar. This telescope has a native focal length of 915 millimeters, but I'm using the reducer that brings it back down to about 750. This isn't exactly a galaxy season setup, but I think you'll be surprised at the field of view I get when paired with the camera I have on there. The ASI 585mm Pro is one of the most affordable monochrome astronomy cameras on the market, and it shares the same mini cooled sensor found on the extremely popular ASI 585MC but in a mono version. The sensor is way smaller than an APS-C sized one you'd find on a DSLR. It creates a pretty tight field of view even at 750 millimeters. Here's how big the M100 Galaxy will appear using this sensor and telescope tonight. Pretty perfect, right? My trusty Skywatcher EQ8 mount has been living outside under a 365 cover for the last few months. It saves me so much time just being able to attach the telescope without worrying about having to polar align each time. It's actually a bit overkill for this telescope setup. An EQ6 would have been fine. Regardless, this EQ8 has never let me down and it's just so easy to run using the ASI Air and my tablet. If you're running a Skywatcher mount, I highly recommend running it with an EQ mod cable like this and the ASI Air. This method is bulletproof and I've left the link to the exact cable I use in the description. I can control the system from inside the house and monitor the pictures as they come through. I have my tablet right next to me in the basement as I play Oblivion Remastered. M100 is a grand design spiral galaxy. It's got these textbook perfect winding spiral arms. I don't think it looks like a blow dryer at all. It's located about 55 million light years away in the Virgo cluster, an area of the night sky littered with other fantastic galaxy targets. It's one of the brightest and largest galaxies in the Virgo cluster. It did make Messier's list after all. It's certainly obtainable from the city, but you'll really need to pour on the exposure time for an epic shot. All of the great shots I saw the blow dryer online had 20 plus hours of exposure time taken from a remote observatory. But I'll give it my best shot from the backyard. I've actually captured this galaxy before. Who remembers that video? I just wasn't super stoked with my final image. I find that broadband galaxy projects really benefit from being captured with a monochrome camera in LRGB. Capturing each wavelength separately gives you the most bang for your buck, and on these dim swirlies, it can make all the difference. If you're going after this galaxy with a more common size sensor camera, like a DSLR, I recommend using a focal length of at least a thousand millimeters. Something like an eight inch or 11 inch SCT would be perfect for this galaxy, which is exactly what I used last time I shot it. I swapped out the garage door lights with red, just got some red bulbs. So these come on automatically when I open the garage door. And as you can imagine, the bright white light shining through is no good. Uh, so that was an easy upgrade. And then, yeah, in here itself, I mean, I don't think I'll ever be satisfied or happy with the organization. Still got the snow blower, need to put that away. The workstation. Same old, oh yeah. Trying to not feel 41 if possible as well. Some people have been asking about Rudy too. Come here, buddy, come here. Rudy's doing really good. He's uh, 10 years old now and you wouldn't know it to look at him. Come here, buddy. Hey, you're feeling good. He's ready for a summer of adventure. We're going on uh, 
a big road trip to Eastern Canada this year, a three week trip with Rudy. So you're gonna see the Atlantic Ocean and go to Newfoundland. What do you think of that? Good boy, that's my boy. So I've had this ASI Air Plus for a while now, going on what, at least four or five years. And I think the input power port is starting to get a little worn. I'm finding I have to tape it in there. Just, it's so loose. And if I don't, I'll lose connection briefly during like a meridian flip and it's so annoying. So I got some uh, electrical tape to tape it in there and that's just kind of part of my routine now. I'm, I'm sure I can't be the only one, but I mean, these ports go through hell being outside and the moisture and you know, perhaps I pull out that plug a little aggressively sometimes, but it needs tape in there to stay in. Oh, and yes, I do just Velcro it to the bottom of the dovetail plate here. It looks so messed up, but it's, it's actually on there really good. Okay, here are the settings I'm going with tonight. I'll take 90 second exposures through each LRGB filter. Now this is a bit shorter than I normally do for an RGB project, but I'm experimenting with shorter subs these days. I did Bode's Galaxy with this setup recently, and I blew out the core of the Galaxy with my typical 180 second sub exposure length. That core of M81 was just gone in those three minute subs. There was no recovering it. And because these subs are so short, I'm gonna be taking a ton of them. With this little camera, it's not an issue from a file size and stacking standpoint. They're nice and small images, about 4,000 by 2,000 pixels in size and about 16 megabytes each. Now, don't get mad at me, but I don't batch my images through each filter. So that means I'm cycling through each LRGB filter every four frames. I realize I could probably dial in my focus better if I stuck to an hour in red and then move on to my green and do an hour of green. But with the skies and forecasts I get here, I'd probably never get around to my blues. This way I at least get to complete a full color image. I'm not using an autofocuser, and yes, I do stress about my images coming out of focus over time. I really don't mind hopping out here to refocus now and then. Okay, I see a few stars starting to pop out, so it's almost time to double check my polar alignment and get up and running on the M100 Galaxy. Again, I'll use the ASI Air to control everything from inside the house, and the latest forecast shows that there's some high clouds passing through for the next three hours or so, so wish me luck. I actually got a second night of imaging on M100. So I ended up with about two, like just under two hours for each filter, which is pretty decent for this Galaxy. So this is uh, what the individual 90 second subs look like, just here in Deep Sky Stacker. So kind of a faint signal in there, but you can definitely see the Galaxy. And then if we open up a stack, this is the through the red filter here and I just show you what's in there. It's not much to look at right here, but just to show you kind of what's hidden hiding in there. We'll pull it up just a little bit. There's some solid signal in there for this galaxy and you can see a nearby um, edge on galaxy over there and some other ones in here too. So pretty exciting. And this really gives you an idea for the field of view through this camera and telescope combo. So just a 750 millimeter refractor, but with this small sensor, it pulls this galaxy right in. And the resolution's pretty good with this system too. Those stars look nice and round, but there's still some, some good detail in there. So in Pix and Sight, I put the stacks through uh, each color filter together. 
And this is, you know, very typical for an LRGB project from the backyard. Some pretty wicked gradients in there, a lot of green casts. And, uh, I'm going to need to do some color balance, but the, the Galaxy itself, there's some solid details in there. So I'm going to spend some time processing this, a lot of uh, gradient removal and some noise reduction, some sharpening and color balancing. Uh, but this is the underlying data for my final image of the M100 Galaxy.